In this DIY, we're going to show you how to connect up a municipal backup water supply to your home. This will allow you to combat the problems of low municipal pressure, as well as those constant interruptions to your home. Once and for all, those problems will be resolved. This DIY can be broken down into three basic steps. Step one is connecting your tank through to your pump. Step two is connecting your pump through to the water line into your home. And step three is connecting a water line from the main supply all the way to the tank to keep that tank at a constant full level with a float valve based at the top. Starting with step one, when it comes to selecting the right size tank, remember this is just a backup supply, so you don't need such a big tank. I'm using a 750 litre tank, a 1000 litre tank would also be sufficient. When it comes to your pump selection, there's a wide range to choose from. You can start off at the entry level, working all your way up to the top of the range, where you have a higher flow rate and a higher pressure. I've selected this particular pump for this application as this house is a large house with numerous users. That means a lot of people are going to be using the taps at the same time. While someone's in the shower, this pump has a variable speed drive and it'll pick up that pressure difference when somebody else opens a tap and you won't notice that pressure drop in the shower. When it comes to connecting your pump to your tank, there's a few options. You have the flexible type, which we've done the video beforehand. Uh, you've also got the hard rigid type. And there's also the option, depending on your setup, that you may actually have to build your own connection. I'm not going to use these connector kits. I'm going to build my own routing. We're using adapters all the way through from the tank through to my pump. Now, I'm not going to go for a straight connection because it is going to be flexing from the tank and slight movement. So it's a good idea to actually have a little L shape or a Z leg shape. Just allows a little bit of movement and no damage or cracking to the pipe at a later stage. Line up your fittings fall into place. There's my routing coming from the tank all the way through. I'm now going to measure the length of pipe which is going to be joining each component together. I'm going to cut that to size, glue them together and then install my pipework. Once I'm happy with my routing, I'm going to put PVC glue in between the mating surfaces to seal the joints. Step one is complete. I've routed my piping all the way from my tank round and into the inlet of my pump. The next step is to run from the outlet all the way into the cold line of the house where I'm going to insert a T-piece into that line. Once you've identified your cold line, mark out exactly where you're going to install the T-piece. Obviously, we're going to remove any excess paint and dirt and then cut out that section. I'm making use of a pipe slicer which is designed to get into those tight gaps where space is restricted. I'm removing 35 millimeters of pipe to accommodate this T-piece. As you can see, I've inserted my T-piece. Now I'm going to install the rest of the piping. For the fittings, I'm actually using speed fit pipe, simply and purely because it is what it says it is. You just place in the insert into the pipe, and on goes the fitting, tighten the nut, and that's it. That one join is done. It's called speed fit for a reason. You can also use brass or copper fittings too. There you have it, that's my piping done for step two. As you can see, I've made use of ball valves so I can isolate the pump. The next step now is to connect up the water supply from the municipal side all the way through into my tank and that's gonna act as a constant replenishment as I use this water. First of all, turn off the main supply and open a tap to release the pressure. Then I'm gonna build up this assembly and install it into my main line. There's my assembly complete. I've got the main line coming up through the isolation valve, all the way through the T-piece, through the non-return valve, and then feeding into the home. Now, what that non-return valve does is it stops that pump constantly cycling the water through the house, all the way around, and then back into the top of the tank again. I've got my T-piece tapping off before the non-return valve, so I've got my main supply coming down through the valve and going all the way into my tank which is going to feed that ball valve and keep that tank full at all times whilst I've got main supply. Now I need to find out how much to cut out of my main line and insert this. I know my starting points are slightly in from there all the way to here so I'll measure that, mark it out onto the pipe, cut that piece of pipe out and then insert this assembly into the line. Now you'll notice you may get a little bit of residual water coming out of the pipe but it won't be at any pressure so you shouldn't have to worry. My main connection is in, and the nice thing about these speed fit fittings is they can actually swivel and rotate. So I'm gonna connect my supply, which is going to the tank, onto the top here, and then I'll put in some holder bats just to hold the pipe secure in the wall. 
That's that part of the installation complete. And as you can see, I made it as easy as possible by making use of the speed fit fittings. I've also got the isolation valves in here to isolate the system whenever I need to. All I need to do now is connect up this pipe to the top of the tank with the same speed fit fittings. There you have it, this DIY is complete and that was as easy as one, two, three. I finally managed to remove those headaches of low pressure and constant interruptions to the water supply to this home. If you enjoyed this DIY and found it useful, like it, share it, you can also subscribe to our channel.